good to be with you on this Thursday, and today uh, we want to look toward the Christmas season. What a great opportunity this is. I've already mentioned it, but I just love this season. People are so open to the gospel. It's uh, just really unparalleled. We've seen that in the last couple of weekends, and uh, just the joyfulness of Christmas just opens hearts, and you can talk about Jesus Christ, and we definitely need to be on gospel uh, duty during these days ahead. And I trust in all of the busyness of the holiday time that we will not forget the souls of men. But I want to encourage you with a very well-known verse when it comes to the prophecies of Christmas, and that is verse 14 of chapter 7 of Isaiah. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's a wonderful prophecy that has encouraged our hearts over the years. 700 years before Christ came, we have this wonderful prophecy that the angel gave uh, to Joseph to explain what was happening there with Mary, there in Matthew. And this is a prophecy that just thrills our hearts to realize that God was going to uh, cause there to be a virgin birth. Jesus would come as a man, the incarnation, and that would be how our salvation would come about, as he would come and then die on the cross for us. But I want to focus on the word Emmanuel from a practical standpoint for us as believers. It's interpreted there in Matthew, Emmanuel, God with us. Now that's a thrill to think of God coming to this earth and actually being part of his own creation for those 33 years and to limit himself to his human existence still being God so that he could die on the cross in our place. That's a wonderful thing. But we also have another expanded meaning of that, and that is that God brought a new era in in which the Word became flesh, the Logos. God communicated himself in a greater way to us by becoming man, the second person of the Trinity, and because of his work, the Holy Spirit, the third person, has come into our spirits as believers once we are saved. And so now that reality of God with us is more than just the fact that Christ was on this earth and that he died and rose again, but it is also the reality that God has made it possible for this age of believers to have an even more intimate fellowship with the Lord. Uh, John, the apostle, who was so close to the Lord Jesus uh, here on the earth, reveled there in John, uh, 1 John chapter 1 on the fellowship that we have because of Jesus Christ. And all throughout that epistle, it's about abiding in that relationship. He was more thrilled about his relationship after Christ ascended, after the Holy Spirit came, than he was before that time, even though that was a precious time. And so, friends, I want us to realize that in the midst of everything that's going on, God is with us. God desires to have that relationship. And that a word, Emmanuel, every time you hear it with the carols and, and uh, just the speaking during the season, would you just say again, God with us. God with us. He's with me. He cares about me. He wants to draw nigh to me. And I need to take advantage of that glorious reality of his presence. And I'm telling you, when you're in the presence of God, you'll be encouraged.